the flat earth model, the sun and moon spotlights are perpetually hovering over and parallel to the surface of the earth. From our vantage point, due to the law of perspective, the two luminaries appear to rise up the eastern horizon, reach their peaks high overhead, and then sink below the western horizon. They do not escape to the underside of the flat earth, as scoffing detractors often imagine, but rather rotate concentric clockwise circles around the circumference from tropic to tropic. The appearance of rising, peaking, and setting is due to the common law of perspective, where tall objects appear high overhead when nearby, but at a distance gradually lower towards the vanishing point. Dr. Samuel Robotham wrote, Although the sun is at all times above and parallel to the Earth's surface, he appears to ascend the firmament from morning until noon, and to descend and sink below the horizon at evening. This arises from a simple and everywhere visible law of perspective. A flock of birds, when passing over a flat or marshy country, always appears to descend as it recedes, and if the flock is extensive, the first bird appears lower or nearer to the horizon than the last. The farthest light in a row of lamps appears the lowest, although each one has the same altitude. Bearing these phenomena in mind, it will easily be seen how the sun, although always parallel to the surface of the earth, must appear to ascend when approaching, and descend after leaving the meridian or noonday position. What can be more common than the observation that, standing at one end of a long row of lamp posts, those nearest to us seem to be the highest, and those farthest away the lowest, whilst, as we move along towards the opposite end of the series, those which we approach seem to get higher, and those we are leaving behind appear to gradually become lower. It is an ordinary effect of perspective for an object to appear lower and lower as the observer goes farther and farther away from it. Let anyone try the experiment of looking at a lighthouse, church spire, monument, gas lamp, or other elevated object from a distance of only a few yards, and notice the angle at which it is observed. On going farther away, the angle under which it is seen will diminish, and the object will appear lower and lower as the distance of the observer increases, until, at a certain point, the line of sight to the object and the apparently uprising surface of the earth upon or over which it stands will converge to the angle which constitutes the vanishing point, or the horizon, beyond which it will be invisible. Globe defenders will often insist this explanation incorrect and challenge flat earthers that if the sun has simply disappeared due to perspective, then a good zoom camera should be able to bring it back into full view after it is set, just like with ships disappearing beyond the horizon. In reality, Zooming a ship back into view from a few miles away is much different than bringing the sun back from over 3,000 miles away. Furthermore, ships are usually traveling only a few miles per hour, while the sun travels over a thousand miles per hour. So the window of opportunity to attempt this experiment is only a few minutes. First, wait until the sun has half disappeared beneath the horizon so that you can only see the top half and are satisfied that the bottom half is no longer visible. Next, using a camera with adequate magnification capability, by zooming into the half-set sun, you will be able to bring the entire sun back into full view. Then, as you zoom in and out, the sun will appear to rise above and sink below the horizon, often with a significant portion of sky reappearing beneath the sun, proving beyond any shadow of doubt that the sun is simply moving away from your position and not physically falling beneath the curvature of a globe. Heliocentrists would have you believe the very opposite of what every human who has ever walked the earth has seen with their own eyes. It is obvious to any child and sovereign-minded adult that the sun, moon, stars, and planets, every light in the sky above, revolves over and around the motionless earth beneath our feet. It is also plain to see that the sun and moon are both approximately the same size and situated relatively close to Earth, not 400 times divergent and not millions upon millions of miles away.
to abandon your senses and everyday experience in favor of such unfounded science fiction fantasies is a fallacy of appeal to authority so extreme that it leaves the brainwashed believer impotent to trust his own natural instincts and forever thereafter change to the fantastical explanations of astronomical charlatans.